from India, so I was visiting a couple of villages a couple of years back, and I was always really interested in renewable energy, so solar, wind, etc. And I realized that okay, people are still using kerosene in um, in remote part of India. And they were distributing solar lamps, actually. You always have these programs of distribution of solar lamps all over India, like millions. And they have one, one billion lamp. That's huge. And each lamp costs $30, $40, which is being subsidized by the government. Now, the problem is, after doing all these things, still people are not using it. Why? So I visited a couple houses and I asked them. They said, yeah, the lamp is nice. Means it's, it's good light and all. But actually, when something goes bad, there's no one to check it on. Like, how, how should I repair it? And when I go to some person, then they charge me a lot. And that makes me, like, sick because I don't want to pay so much because I don't have money. So I go back to my kerosene because kerosene is nice because at least I know how to repair it. Something goes bad. And kerosene is available. And that made me think that, okay, the, the only problem why people are going to solar was uh, kerosene back. It's just because they don't, they don't have knowledge. Then we designed this LED safari lamp, which is like four components, mm -hmm. with a uh, with lot of thinking went into that we don't need a control system in that, so that we, it's, under, it's easy for people to understand that. If I introduce more complicated like capacitor, diode, and etc., it becomes super complicated into that. So we went into more in these details, we started teaching people, and, and this lamp is actually meant for people who have no technical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they can understand this concept, they can understand what is sustainability. They also understand by the teaching that don't throw the batteries. Batteries are poisonous, actually. So mm -hmm. we introduce the slowly sustainability concept in their mind. And that's how this uh, story started, that, okay, lamp should be the center, and there should be teaching around, because we missed in Western world, because mm -hmm. we had money, we had all the facilities. Mm -hmm. And also, the people have their own knowledge, own ownership, and they don't look for kind of technology from other parts. They can develop their own. That's how the countries develop. One day of uh, burning kerosene is equivalent to smoking two packets of cigarettes. And you can imagine, and most of it is the women and the kids are more effective because at night women have to cook and the kids have to study. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. So imagine even if, so with just having a pure light, it's a remove, not only gives you more light during darkness so you can, you'll be more efficient, Plus, it improve the health, so you really take care of the health issues, mm -hmm. which is really bizarre, it's, it's immense there. So it's kind of, you know, get them into thinking process. But we have another set of lamps which we are still working on that to improve life, and it will be, I don't know, every, every lamp has to go testing. Commercial lamp available right now, the cheapest ones, which is around 8 to $10, mm -hmm. which goes around 6 to 1 year if handled properly. So even if there's no lamp, which at this rate, two to three dollars, which will make you make you that okay, it will just remain ever for uh, ten, three, eight years. So we have to think that: Do people want a super expensive battery, which is going to last for like ten years, or do they want a cheap something which can satisfy the solution, and they have to replace the battery? And we have a system of recycling, which is difficult. I know it's difficult one, but that's what our teaching is also involved. When we go to the villages, we make sure that. What is the, with uh, local, local partners, NGOs, organization, we do the first thing is recycling, then only we provide components or we establish more things. Otherwise, we don't do it. Because we are more aware that these toxic, imagine the billions of batteries just flowing into these markets every three months. That's, that's, I'm just destroying whole system. We use the mobile batteries. Why we use mobile batteries? Because mobile batteries are already available, so we don't have to use the supply, extra supply chain for getting. And also, this whole lamp is meant for mobile batteries so that they can remove this battery, which is mobile battery, they can replace the mobile battery of their mobile phone and charge the mobile phone also. It's just a crude way of charging, but it, it works. And then you have this uh, switch. So basically, when it's on, so you cannot charge the battery. So it's not charging. When it is off, it is charging continuously. And we make sure that there's a diode also to there's no reverse current going from battery to it, and there's the basic electronics. And that's it. And uh, yeah, and that's why it's easy to understand for the people. And we teach whole this electronic concept with, uh, with the water flowing from mountain. Okay. Everything. And that means exactly because everyone has seen the water flowing. So they can exactly can think that, okay, water is like a current, you know, height is like a voltage. 
and all the stones or the rubles along the path is like a resistance. How do you make sure that things are working perfectly? So it's really practical thinking. They really see around them that yes, I should not take a lot of water from the ground. You know, means this is bad. I should do rain water harvesting also in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And and this all comes from electrical concepts. It's nothing new. It's just the different way of teaching them, and they they feel it that yes, I can do it because I understood the concept now.